I'm in Richmond, California at the headquarters for Pegasus Solar. Today I'm going to be meeting the team and we're going to be talking about their technology and their products, doing some testing and taking a look at some of the new stuff that's about to hit the market. So let's go ahead and check this out. There he is. What's up, man? How you doing? Doing awesome. Good to see you, bro. Good to see you, too. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming. Oh, absolutely. Where yeah. do we get started? Uh, let's just go inside. This is Kai Steffens. He's the CEO and founder of Pegasus. Pegasus is a company that manufactures and designs solar panel hardware. And they're on a mission to make solar panel installations easier. We're going to start off with a factory tour talking about their products and how they get delivered to the job site. This is our rail warehouse. So we have all our rail come in from suppliers around the world. Um, you can see how compact the packs. These are 14 foot rails. Dude, that, that's crazy right there as far as like a 14 foot stick of rail. Like load that in your truck. Get that in your truck. And then this is the seven foot? Yep. So like I have an eight foot truck bed and I have a ladder rack. And so it's like the options between loading a stick of rail, whether, you know, the size is, it's going on top of your ladder on the ladder rack, or it's just going in your truck bed. It's a smart, smart. So this, this sign was apparently put in the wrong place. We like the seven foot rails. This is where it belongs on the 14 foot sticks. Don't use these, use those ones. So we actually one time uh, I went to a job and the shipping company yeah. lost the pallet. <laughs> so I had to show up at their yard to find it. It was 13 kilowatt system and it was a tile replace system, yeah. which, you know, tile replace mounts are, it takes up a lot more than comp, right? I fit everything with the seven foot rail in the back of like a midsize SUV. All right. So I see, I see blue right there. What's blue? No finish to flash. No finish. Okay. All right. No finish. What's red? Red, it's probably S tile, scissor mount. Dark blue. Dark blue. Well, I'm not sure what it is. Dark blue? No, oh, that's going to be the sled for the scissor mount. And then we got uh, the green. Whatever that's a bonding product. It's probably bonding jumpers. How about the red box? Above it? Hit yeah. The clamp. Hit the clamp. Who, who would have thought, like, to color coordinate your boxes so you know what's inside of it when you're far away from it? That's genius. Here's another little thing. Again, everything's color coded, reduces pick back air, allows for super short lead time for our customers. So how many SKUs do you have? Uh, probably 35 to 40. 35 to 40, yeah. so all the little hardware. So we have MLP mounts, the T-bolts. Here we go, multi-clamp. Multi-clamp, I love this mid-clamp. So it's multi because it's an end and a mid. And in the mid, 30 to 40 millimeter, you don't need any extra yeah. sleeves or other components. Here, this is one of my favorite things about how these are packaged. It's a sharp knife. Check this out. It's on a loop right there. So you have all the clamps. And then this is reusable. You press the little groove in there and it pops out and then you can pull a clamp off, use it and then reconnect that cable tie. That's cool. So that's like when I'm on the roof and I'm like, Brady, I need some mid clamps. <laughs> that's go, like man. mid clamps. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> no more trips down the ladder. So this mount has like a little cage on the bottom of it and you click up on this slide and the mount will push through the cage and apply the sealant to the surface. So just giving you a look at what that looks like when you kind of take that off carefully. You're not supposed to remove them for installs, but you can take them off just to see what's in there. And just goop all the way around it. If I were to like take this cage off of it, and just like theoretically just install it like that. Does the cage ser like serve any purpose, I guess spreading it mm -hmm. um, for like water intrusion or anything like that? It'll still be just as waterproof. Yeah. Uh, but it just, it does help uh, 
honestly contain it so there's so it doesn't get all over the place. Like when you're moving your ropes around. Oh right, no kidding. Like when you're on the roof and your rope is dragging down below you, and it's like rubs across an attachment, and then you have, you know, goop on your rope that gets everywhere. This is like keeping it less messy, better for packaging, and does help apply it evenly to the surface of the roof. Did you see the red? So we're checking out the InstaFlash 2. So this is a directed deck with six screws or a rafter attachment with two screws. And one of the most unique things about this attachment that I've seen is that it can actually be installed on a butt joint. And if you don't know what that is, I'll show you and I'll show how often you come across that on a comp shingle roof. I'm going to go ahead and mark out where the rafter is and then chalk a line on it and then follow that line down and then show you every single place that there's a butt joint that lands where the attachment would go if it was a raptor attachment. So I'm gonna kind of mark that line there. <laughs> Chalk on, okay, all right, I'm gonna steal you. So right. my mark is this red one right here. All right. I'm gonna go to the top of the roof and thank you. We're gonna snap a line up here. All right, so here's our raptor mark right there. Can you snap it? So a butt joint is essentially where the shingle ends and the new one starts. And they're kind of hard to see intentionally because the shingles are like textured. But if you look really close right here, you can see this shingle goes all the way to here. So this would be a butt joint and that would be a butt joint. So the next rafter over? The next rafter over. Oh yeah, yeah, right here, right? Yeah, there's the butt this joint. This one right there, butt joint. There's a butt joint right here, or where was it? It was right. So this one's a lot easier to see when they're yeah. both, both low. But some oh, of them end right. on the shingle, on the, you know, the the different, the tab of the shingle. Oh, so interesting. Harder, those are a lot harder to see. That makes a lot of sense. So right here, this is a shingle tab on top of the shingle and the butt joint is on the tab. So it looks like it's just a tab, not a butt joint. So that one's kind of hidden. So you could put a bracket right here on this rafter and have well, no idea. Just completely you just, like, I, I don't even know. That if I wasn't looking from below, I wouldn't have noticed that that was a, uh, a butt joint. Um, if you have one roof leak, that's kind of ruining the customer experience. That's ruining the project. It's not like, oh, if we have 10 roof leaks, it's a bad thing. It's if you have a single roof leak, it's an issue. And that's one of the big advantages that I'm seeing about this foot is that the sealant that's inside of it, you know, combined with all the technologies of how this bracket's made, that sealant can actually seep into that butt joint and seal it off. So you don't have either potential leaks or additional labor to correctly install that bracket. Yo, I just snuck off to the bathroom to film for a second, but dude, what I have to say about Pegasus is like company culture is important and working for someone where you like their job or you know even buying something from someone who has employees who enjoy it is important and they're over there doing taco tuesday where they're out they have all this set up employees get together relax have some good food together that's really cool let's go let's go check it out i could smell this cooking when i first walked in yeah we got look at that Yeah, I don't walk. Yeah, walking is no fun. Why would we walk? We got scooters. <laughs> oh, right at your own risk. <laughs> Wait, what is this? Well, we're you're checking. baking cookies with this. I thought it was gonna be cookies on there. So that's been in the you oven since. Uh, what is that, April 4th? Okay. 
and we're evaluating if any sealant comes out the bottom. And you can see it oh, doesn't, okay. it doesn't drip over time. So you see that you, you can see a couple misses right there. Sealant is, you're seeing if it's going to like ooze out the bottom and you're going to mm -hmm. lose sealant from the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's interesting. And so that's something some customers are concerned with. And then is you this can, still like, uh, yeah, you can touch like it. not hardened? Yeah. 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 yeah thanks. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can touch it. Put it on your face. <laughs> that's <Pretty> awesome. <laughs> All right. So, 194 for what three months now three months yeah, three i pull months. it off yeah yeah you're gonna burn yourself in the aluminum though so yeah well, i'm a solar panel installer so right. we're built different how <laughs> that's hot we go cry about this at my hotel tonight <laughs> So the other thing we, we check for is how the sealant might have penetrated through the layers of the shingles. Oh. So clearly we still have good sealant through there. So, okay, I, I got to like ask again. So this has been in an oven mm -hmm. and that sealant is still, it hasn't hardened, it hasn't? Not at all, not at all. It's, it's designed to not harden over Ever. time. Yeah, well, oh, forever. Yeah, forever is a long time, but yeah, okay. uh, it'll, it'll outlast your roof in okay. terms of uh, when it'll harden and when it'll. Okay, so now we're gonna peel more. like uh, the lay a layer of shingle. Well, so first we'll look underneath the very bottom. Okay, you can see there's sealant. It's all the way through here, and if you look where the decking is, the sealant's actually around each of the penetrations, so there's no way for water to move away from the shaft of the screw through your deck. Okay. So that's like, I'm on a roof, I'm drilling holes, I miss three times, and then I put the bracket in. Mm -hmm. The sealant is going to fix that problem for me. And not only is it gonna fix it, it's also not gonna drill. Oh, look at it between the shingles too. Yeah, between the tar paper. Okay, the be between the underlayment and the shingle itself, it's seeping into there and yep. filling those holes as well. Yep. That's wild. That's yeah. pretty consistent with what I'm seeing on the roof because when I repair roof leaks, generally what that roof leak is, is from a missed rafter. Where you miss the rafter, dr drill a hole, move over, find the rafter, put the lag screw in. The, the, the miss is what leaks. And so that's sealing the miss for you. So what we'll go ahead and do, and again, this is just to show the distribution, the distribution of the sealant through the layers after the install. So first we check how things look there. And this was a deck attached, so we have six screws going through. Um, so set that aside for later. Okay. What was the uh, aging on this? This one is, uh, I'm not sure when we installed this one. March 14th. March 14th. Friday. Friday. <laughs> uh, so. You can see some evidence of the of the sealant going through on the tar paper. Okay. And then underneath here on the decking, you can see, you know, a considerable amount that went through on each hole. Oh yeah, it's like still sticky too. Yeah. Like the same stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's cool. Like as from like an installer's perspective, um, it's like you never want to leave a job site and be like, uh, is that sealed up? You've all done it, right? You're like, uh, like this just gives me the confidence to like install something and know it's been like tested, you know, to fix those problems. That's cool. Yeah, yeah March 14th. Ian, how long was the, was this in the oven, this one also? Or is this an HF? No, that one wasn't aged artificially. Yeah, that was just a, this was just like four, four months, months old. <laughs> four, just four months sitting yeah. there. Cool. Still, still super sticky. So fun fact about uh, shingles, as we're demonstrating in this test right here, um, they're not actually waterproof and if there's standing water on the shingle it'll actually saturate the shingle and then leak through the shingle which you may not have known this but what we're showing here basically is we have a cup you know sealed 
to a, a piece of a shingle and then a cup underneath. And we can show that once this water sits here for long enough, it's actually going to start dripping through the shingle and into the cup. The bracket, since it has pre-applied sealant on it, um, as the bracket is compressed to the roof, the sealant goes down with the screws. And as we've shown, you know, pulling apart the different layers um, of the, 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 the roof that we have, you can see that sealant going through the butt joints. You can see it coming in with the screws. You can see it going down all the way to the OSB or the plywood um, and sealing up those holes actively with like the pressure going down because if you just have a bracket installed and there's still a pathway if the water it's just raining and the water does get through the shingles it'll find its way you know to that hole which is a hole in your underlayment and you know start different processes of rotting or molding or worse scenario even dripping So we have an acrylic plate here with shingles glued on top representing a butt joint. And so what we'll do is we'll put an InstaFlash 2 on top here, screw it down. That way on the back side we can see that sealant come through the butt joint and verify that's actually squishing through and hitting the underlayment. So that sealant that's going in between the butt joint and filling that surface, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So let's see that so so what's different about this mount is you're using compression and you're also using sealant and since the sealant is pre-applied and then you're using compression the compression forces the sealant into the different spots that may be unlevel or a butt joint or something like that and that demonstration just kind of shows the sealant seeping through that butt joint confirming that that sealant is making it down to the next row of shingles and sealing off so there's no water intrusion that would come through this joint at the top and run through and like trickle down the lag screw or anything like that. Is that a freezer? That's where you're getting the mounts from? Oh yeah, check it out. <laughs> there's no popsicles in here. This is just uh, brackets and we're at... What's zero it? degrees. Zero, oh, it's at zero degrees? I mean, can I grab one? Yeah. Yeah. Icy cold. Yeah, <laughs> it is frozen. It's not going. Well, this thing is frozen. Cold to the touch. It's been in the freezer. Looks like a popsicle. You can tell like the sealant's frozen on it. So I guess what we're doing is we have a tank right here. It's sealed down to the bottom and then there's shingles in it and we already have holes. So when we dump water into this, water is going to leak. Um, what we're going to do is take a frozen uh, mount and then screw it into um, the surface below and see if the holes are filled or the water intrusion stops um, with this bracket in like the world's worst situation because you know worst scenario you have a pool of water in a frozen bracket it doesn't get any worse than that oh yeah look at that so screws are gone through that and there's no water dripping out of the bottom of that. Installing solar panels when it's raining outside or it's cold or it's snowy isn't the funnest job out there, but can you even install the mounts in those conditions and have them be like leak proof? Um, this, that's pretty crazy. Um, you, you can see the water levels like up to my hand, it's a few inches deep. But you can see the sealant is like coming out and sealing the roof. And so this attachment is rated um, and designed to be able um, to install in bad conditions. And where I'm at in Utah, that's like nine months out of the year. It's raining, freezing cold, like harsh weather conditions. We really get like all four seasons. And it's not like I'm just going to install solar panels on the nice days. Like I'm gonna to go to work every single day. And so that, that gives me a lot of confidence as far as you know applying this product on a roof right after I have removed snow off of the roof. 
and we're good to put attachments on. That's that's pretty crazy. Check that out. All right, so we're gonna mark the water level on here. That's proof, yeah. All right, there, there's our water level. Mark it across there. There we go. We're gonna come back and check this. This is, uh, what, is it like three o'clock? It's 2.07. 2.07, we're gonna come check it out um, later and see if that water level has gone down. It's been, uh, what, 22 hours, almost a full day? Almost a full day, I yeah. wanted to go check on the InstaFlash 2 that we have installed in the tank of water um, and just check to see water levels and everything oh look at that so we put we put this plate on top so there wasn't water that was evaporating and that is that's crazy it's at exactly that level i don't see it dropped at all and looking at the table it's like completely dry um that's that's impressive yeah. yeah that's that's yeah. that's pretty crazy yeah, like probably like, <laughs> eight inches of standing head pressure on that yeah yep. eight inches is basically in a fish tank there um and one thing that i like about this is this testing isn't necessarily like a standard practice in the industry these mounts need to be tested for certain loads so they know they're attached to the roof and the solar panels are attached to the roof but Doing additional water testing right here just gives me confidence as the installer that when it rains, it's going to be watertight because these brackets aren't going to be in a fish tank. They're going to be on the roof and they're going to be in the elements. Um, that's, that's, that's a really cool test. Gives me confidence to install this in, you know, the worst situations, rain, snow, ice, anything like that, and sleep at night because I know it's not going to leak. So I just finished up meeting with Pegasus, spent a full day and a half here looking at everything that goes on um, in their company, what it takes to get a product developed and innovated and um, you know tested and packaged and labeled and everything that it takes to get a new product all the way to the job site. I have to say I'm extremely impressed with all the things I learned about um, their products and product development. And I'm really impressed with Pegasus as a good place to work, a good place to buy products from, and a company that really cares about putting out the best products. So I'm headed back to Salt Lake, just getting picked up by my Uber driver right now. Um, but you know, stay, stay tuned for uh, future videos um and some long form short form content and uh a lot of everything you know in the future